Hey, hey, what's up, my friend? So in today's episode, I want to talk about why traders lose money with trading indicators. And it's not the indicator's fault, really, right? Indicators, they have a, a very bad rep, right? No, price action is king. Indicators are lagging. Indicators suck, right? Throw your indicators. It's cluttering your charts, blah, blah, blah. So here's the thing, right? Indicators, they are not the bad guys, right? It's that traders adopted right from the wrong perspective and that's why they lose money with it with it right so reason number one is this right, is that traders think that indicators they are like an end all be all kind of tool right oh if my rsi is oversold let me buy and then when you lose money you blame the indicator no that shouldn't be the way right remember indicators what they do is they simply indicate what the market is doing they simply summarize right whatever is on your price chart that's why they are called an indicator to indicate what the market is doing so indicator itself right it's not a strategy it's not a system and you shouldn't treat it as an end all be all. And the problem with treating it as an end all be all, right, is that it makes you stop thinking for yourself. For example, traders, right, they love to trade moving average crossovers, especially when they are new to trading, right? The fast moving average cross above the slow moving average you buy. But here's the thing let me ask you what's the rationale behind it? Why do you wanna buy when the fast moving average crosses above the slow moving average? And if you ask this to most traders, they won't even know the reason why. They just do it because that's what a textbook says. Blah, blah, blah. And it makes you stop thinking for yourself, right? It makes you re over-reliant on a tool that you don't even understand to start with. They don't even know how moving average goes up and down. Can you see where I'm coming from? So if you are too over-reliant on indicators, if you treat it as the, the so-called holy grail, that's all you need to know, right? Then naturally, you'll lose money with indicators. Okay, so that's the first thing. Second thing, right, why traders lose money with indicators is because they don't use it in the right context. So what do I mean by this? Let me give you an example. Let's say you want to race in an F1. Will you take a Toyota or a Ferrari? Well, it's a no-brainer, right? You'll pick a Ferrari because, you know, it is fast, right? It could potentially win you, right, in an F1 race. You won't take a Toyota. So this is what we mean by context. And likewise, let's say you are going out with your family, right? You want a fuel-efficient car. Which car will you pick, the Toyota or the Ferrari? Well, the Toyota, right, because it's fuel efficient, right, can, can, hold small, I mean, can house more people in the car as well. So this is what we mean by context, right? You need to use the right indicator within the right context. Okay, so this brings me to this question, right? So what are the types of, or rather, what are the different purposes of indicators so you can use, the, use them in the right context, right? So let me share with you a few ways to use trading indicators, right? Number one, trading indicators, they are useful, right, to help you filter down for market condition. Let's say you want to trade when volatility is low in the market, you can use an indicator like the average true range to help you define right the current market volatility and only enter your trades during low volatility market condition. Or if you want to enter during high volatility market condition, then make sure the ATR value right is high enough to meet your needs. So that's one example. Another example is that you can use the uh, indicators right to help you time your entries. For example, if the if the uh, RSI, right, crosses above 30, right, it's telling you that there is bullish momentum coming into the market and you can look, treat it as a buy signal to enter a trade, as an entry trigger to enter a trade, right? I'm not saying that when the RSI crosses above 30, right, you buy immediately, right? I'm just saying that that could be an entry trigger for you to enter a trade, right? You still need a valid trading setup, right, before you enter a trade, okay? So the RSI only serves as an entry trigger to help you, you know, pull the trigger to buy, okay? That's where I'm coming from. And also, right, you can use the indicators, right, to help you identify area of value on your chart. For example, in a healthy trend, the price tends to, you know, bounce off the 50 period moving average, right? If you see it bouncing off, you know, two or three times, right? To me, right, that's an area of value that the market is respecting. And you can look to, to buy, right? You can look for buying opportunities, right, at the 50 period moving average. Right? And that's another way you can actually use indicators, right, to help you identify area of value. So you can see that. Different indicators, they have different purposes. Some indicators even have multiple purposes, right? For example, moving average can help you trail your stop loss, filter for market conditions to trade. It can help you also serve as an entry trigger, right? And much, much more. So the biggest takeaway here is, again, right? Two things, right? To recap. Number one, indicators, they are not an end all be all, right? You need to think deeper about what your indicators is about and why it works. Number two, right, you need to use the right indicators in the right market conditions or rather the right indicators, right, for your own needs, right? You don't just anyhow mix and match just because your charts look good, right? Because it looks a lot of lines, looks really cool. No, it doesn't work that way, right? You need to know what is your purpose, what is your goal, right? And then using the right indicators, right, to meet your needs, okay? So with that said, I have come towards the end of today's episode. If you've enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up, right? 
subscribe to my YouTube channel. The button is below. Click subscribe. And with that said, I will talk to you soon.